going on youtube clover bells here back with another scarlet violet video and today we've got another heck of a squad here with some relatively niche pokemon we've got great tusk we've got murkrow and we've got group on it all on one team here very reminiscent of regulation c uh and this team in particular won a regulation f tournament so shout outs to the boys that you know gave gave me this team andrew armstrong for posting the the rental tilzy for using the squad uh, to win that regulation F tournament and also a little bit of shout outs going to Hankake for the EV spreads. The bandit also had a hand in it. A lot of people had their hand on this team. So, um, you know, shout outs to the group for making a squad like this work. And it's got some cool options here uh, that we're all very familiar with and some returning uh, once dominant options like a Heatran, right? So let's start with the Merkle here. So basically, it's a Tailwind Hay set. Remember? When Merkle was a thing and Haze was a thing, when you had to like really use it and remove Dondozo debuffs. So Haze has that kind of purpose again, but this time you can remove stuff like you know Swords Dance boost, Calm Mind boost from the Rising Raging Bolt set again. You can remove the Kamo stuff, the Reggie Steel stuff. So Haze is able to just remove all of that altogether. But don't forget that Haze can remove Intimidate debuff. So stuff like Incineroar that wants to come in and Intimidate the Great Tusk and Intimidate the Brute Bonnet, you can wipe those away with Haze. And then at the same time, if you are also Snarled, you can also wipe that away. And then at the same time, Great Tusk, you're lowering your defenses with something like Headlong Rush, right? And even um, Close Combat, for example, you can wipe those away with Haze as well. So there's some pretty good synergy with the squad all in all. And then at the same time, Draco Meteor, you can wipe those debuffs away. A lot of people forget what Haze can do, you know, when you're first starting to learn competitive. You think it just removes, like, you know, the opponent's debuffs. It removes yours as well. So that being said, it's also got a Snarl set here, like we said. Uh, so now you can also damage mitigate from the special end of things. So that's going to be really good. And then Sunny Day just enables the entire team. It literally enables the entire team. Great Tusk. Um, Raging Bolt and Flood. I mean, these are three Protosynthesis Pokemon, right? Remember when Pangi also was featuring Great Tusk, Flood, I mean, and Raging Bolt with something like Jump Bluff Sun? That also is somewhat of an idea here, um, except now we're using Murkrow instead. And then now we've got Brute Bonded here, which is a little underrated in my opinion, right? Yes, it's got that dark typing, which makes it a little bit weak to Fluttermane, but you have Terra Poison now and you can able to withstand it. And then you're super bulky anyway, and now you can be aggressive with your own spores and then your rage fighters and then now you can also click seed bomb so and then even sucker punch we can which uh you know also gives you another priority move to click all in all right then the av heatran set so that's gonna be good so against things that is not named landris right so you're gonna be able to wall flood means you can wall other ogre ponds too the ogre pond heart flame you wall that the one you do have to watch out for is the the wellspring one but you've got terra grass for that as well um, the Raging Bolt is a Life Orb Raging Bolt set, so it's going to do more damage anyway, you know, even without Sunny Day, but now you add Sunny Day on top of that, and the Raging Bolt just, um, you know, pretty much one-shots a lot of different things, all things considered. That Thunderbolt on that Fluttermane slot, um, to me, is a little bit situational. You already got Thunderbolt on Raging Bolt. I would rather just go, like, another coverage move there. Maybe something like, you know, Icy Wind or Parish Song or even power gem right like you know something else to hit some uh, another fire type for example um but you know it is situational that fourth move is always on a little you know conveyor belt well it'll just rotate depending on where we are uh at the given point in the meta right so that being said it's a super fun team and you know when i was testing it out on showdown i was i was i was i was having fun so hopefully we can get some cool wins with this great tusk team so without wasting any further time let's just go straight into the rank battles We've got Articuno, but no Alolan Ninetales. What? Moving that out of the camera there. Um, there is a Latios here. Why is there an Artic Is there anything here that gets snow? Manual snow? Okay. Why do we have Articuno, but no snow? That seems weird to me. Okay. Um... So Great Tusk could do something here, again, just because we have Ice Spinner, right? Which is very useful. Uh, and and the fact that we have Mirko um, means something here. I, uh, great Tusk kind of looks looks great. Um, great Tusk kind of looks great. So 
Then the question is, do we want Brute Bond? I think we want Heatran too. Like Heatran looks really good into stuff like, you know, Fluttermane and Articuno anyway. And then do we want Raging Bolt here or do we want just our own Flutter? I think this is a tough one, right? It's the Heart Flame one too. Because I also want to switch that in into Ivy Culture and get a nice little boost. Uh, I think... I think we'll go Brute Bonnet again. Why not? Why not? Let's see. How can we do this? What are we what are we gonna lead here? against the the great tusk all right that is an ogre pond and we see an urshima okay so that's your answer it's actually the dark one not the not the uh the the water one so that's good we have tailwind potential um we have rock slide how do i want to do this i can simply go tailwind here uh, i am scarf but the question is uh, but again, the Urshibu also could be faster. No, I don't think he's Scarfed. So what I can do technically is I can still Sunny Day here. If I Sunny Day... <laughs> um, and then the next question is, do I Headlong Rush or do I Rock Slide or do I Close Combat? I kind of want to just get rid of the Ursh, right? Just in case if that thing clicks Spiky Shield. All right, he did it. All right, but we are going to get a Protosynthesis boost. Okay, so here's this. All right, Headlong Rush outspeeding. So we should... Oh, that didn't even get it down to Sash. All right, well, we're going to take an Ivy Code. We might lose both things here. All right, oh, he just clicks Horn Leech. Okay, well, nice knowing you, Great Tusk. But this is okay. All right, is this Wicked Blow? Oh, it's actually just close combat. Okay, well, Mirko's gonna get a chance here to to live, so that's cool. And now we've got Heatran pressure coming in uh, with Tailwind support. And we have an AV, so that's nice. And now this Ogre Pond kind of gets walled by the Heatran a little bit. Because now what does he do? You got a Grass move? You got a Fire move? Heatran doesn't care. So, in all honesty, we've got Tailwind and we've got Heat Wave. Tell me where this fails. All right, I think we're fine. Especially in the sun. You don't want to face Heatran in the sun. Now, he can still kill the Murkrow. So there's that. But I I'm already going to be getting Tailwind up. And then I'm going to get something in more aggressive. Like the Fluttermane, for example. So there's that. So what does he want to do here? All right, he's spiky shield, so that's fine. So we're gonna get Tailwind. He can still technically click Sucker. Oh, he just clicks. Oh, that's that's even better. <laughs> I mean, so here's the Tailwind. Now, unfortunately, I don't have something like Foul Play. All right, so now he knows that Heat Wave is coming out here. Okay, he probably terrestrializes the Ogre, but what does that really do for him? In all honesty, uh, what does that actually do? I mean, we do have Brute Bond in here. I don't want to take a, a thing over there. So all I can really do is click Snarl. Right? And whatever. Just click Heat Wave. Okay. He goes for the Sucker Punch into the Heatran. We take some minuscule damage. All right. We go for a Snarl, which doesn't kill the Earth. That's unfortunate. I thought it would do it. So then this Heat Wave could have been single target. All right. And we do miss something. We miss the Ogre Pond. Oh, no. That's the one I wanted to hit. Oh, Heatran. You got to put on your glasses, my friend. All right. Who's an Ivy Cudgel? Okay. So, that was unfortunate. I had to, like, kind of hope there. But we do get Brute Bonnet coming in with the, the Sunny Day boost. So, that's that. So, two for one there. So now what does he do? If it's Articuno, he's kind of cooked here. Let's see. Alright, I have no idea what that name is. 
All right, it is actually just Flutter Mage. So, that's cool. All right, now this is where we kind of have to do a little bit of terrestrialization, right? Uh, but we do get our, our attack heightened. So now, here's where certain speed tiers come into play here. So let me just check this real quick. 190, is that gonna be faster than the Flutter? It's tough. Um, I can also click Sucker Punch over here, you know, just to deal a little bit of chip. Right? A little bit of chip. But I really need, I really need this thing alive. So what I'm gonna do is actually just chuck the, the seed bomb over here. Let's let's test our speed tiers here. Okay, let's heat wave again. Yeah, he's forced to do this. It, this has to be the ogre. Oh, it's actually the flutter. Oh, it's it's ghost. Huh. Okay. I've never seen Terra ghost flutter. Okay. Very very interesting. All right, and here's our poison. <laughs> uh, so I could probably safely assume he wasn't going for uh, a fairy type attack here. All right, it is just going to be straight Shadow Ball into what, though? It is going to be the... But we are AV, though. We should be able to take this. Oh, yeah, we eat that. All right, and we do connect on the Heat Wave this time. Almost knocking out the Ogre Pond. But we are going to kill the Flutter, so that's good. Okay, we know this is probably like some kind of Ivy Cudgel. Uh, we are thick though, and he should. Yep, that is an Ivy Cudgel. Okay, we do live. So now it's a two on two, and there's the Latios. Okay. So we have Sucker Punch, but I think he just protects there. So, I'm going to take this opportunity. I'm going to try and make it fall asleep. And I still have my Terrasization available, but all in all, just in case he doesn't, uh, you know, protect the Ogre. I kind of still want to, you know, um, do something here. So, do I take that risk? I think he has to protect the Ogre Pawn. Because this is the last turn of Tailwind. Yes, it is. So I'm pretty sure he's just going to protect it. So let's spore this slot. And let's go ahead and flash cannon over here. Alright, he has to. Yep, there's the spiky shield. Easy read there. Okay. Flash cannon comes out. Into the Latios. Good damage. And we do get off the spore. That's huge. So now the Latios does have to take a turn of sleep. Uh, so that's very nice. So now we always pin that Ogre Pond slot with a potential Sucker Punch. And even if he um, clicks Follow Me, that's fine too. All right, Proto oh, Protosynthesis. All right, everything actually wears off. So his best play is to Follow Me, in my opinion. All right, that's his best play. So we Sucker Punch this. And even if he doesn't click an attack... Um, we're still going to click the flash cannon over on this slot because the we walled the ogre pond. He can't do anything there, um, so I feel like this is always going to be a, a safe play here. Ah, uh, he did go for an attack, so that's good for me. So now we just end up winning this game. Okay, so that's great. All right, all right. Latios, you know, again takes a turn to see, but at this point, sucker punch is within range. Um, even if this doesn't pick up the KO, or even if it didn't, yeah. So, good job, Brute Bonnet. Great Tusk. <laughs> um, we just needed to get in better position, but it did what it needed to do against the, the Earth stuff. Okay, we've got Dragonite, no Chimpao. We've got Iron Hands Ensign, double Fake Out with Urshifu. There's a Cornerstone Ogre Pond, and there is a, a Slow King. That's like the only odd one out there. There's a Slow King. And the fact that there's no Champ over here. There, there, there's no special attackers except that Slow King here. So, how do we want to do this? I think Great Tusk actually looks pretty good here. Besides the fact that there is a Dragonite. Um, 
We do have Ice Spinner, so that's going to be great for us. We have Tailwind, so that's good too. Um, lots of different ways we can approach this. And our, our Mirko has Snarl in essence. We also have Sunny Day here. I think we can just simply go aggressive here. Like, if it's Dragonite, we can just, you know, Ice Spinner that thing. The only thing I'm worried about is the Incineroar, right? Um, so how do I want to do this? I also have Raging Bolt here. I think he just has to lead Incin in essence. So I'm going to leave Fluttermane here. And I'm going to also lead Brute Bonnet. I'm going to go with Murkrow and this guy in the back. And we'll see what happens. All right, that's that's a weird combination there. I, I was also a little bit pressed for time there. So I kind of just went with whatever I got, but I think Fluttermane uh, should have a good start here, no matter what he brings. Okay, and let's see what Brute Bonnet can do uh, in a matchup like this. So here we go. We've got the Slow King and we've got the, the other Ogre Pond, so that's cool. All right. Uh, so, I can very easily click Spore, um, all things considered. He can also just simply click Follow Me. Uh, I do have the option for Shadow Ball here. I am Specs. I can also just click Dazzling Gleam and do a ton of damage. But I think what I just want to do is just give him an old Shadow Ball here. And, um, you know, I can also just threaten with something like Spore here. I can also just Rage Powder just to keep things interesting. But he is a Grass Terra as well, so he might... Can't actually score him. I can technically score this slot. Let's see what happens. Okay, he's just actually gonna get me um, the Slow King here. It actually doesn't die, even though we, just, we, we did Specs there. Um, he goes into the Brute Bonnet instead. That's very interesting. Alright, we do get to spore the Slow King. Alright, so there's that. Okay, so pretty cool, I would say. So there's his first turn of sleep. Uh, it is a leftover set, so there's that. Um, but other than that, I can also just Shadow Ball this thing. And also just simply Sucker Punch. Right, into into this slot. You know, just in case he does try to attack the Flood main. He could even Spiky Shield, all kinds of things, right? But I think this is just safe. Alright, so Sucker Punch comes out. That's pretty good chip damage. We might be able to KO with Shadow Ball here. Alright, it's gonna be close. It, we are Specs. Okay, that's good. Nice. Alright, so now let's see if he does wake up here. Um, nope, he stays asleep. So that's good. Alright, so strong opening turns for us, all things considered. I thought he would actually just click the Ivy Cudgel into the, the Flood Rain there. He did not do that. He also kept his Terrestrialization. Um... There's the Incineroar, so that's cool. We've got Great Tusk for that, potentially. Alright, Intimidating the Brute Bonnet. Um, but again, this is just another easy Shadow Ball cleanup over here. And we can also simply just spore the Instant over there, right? He can't pick out the Fluttermane. I think we're good. So, Fluttermane able to, you know, really put the hamper on his Slow King here. This Slow King couldn't even do a thing, alright? Um, and now let's see what the instant decides to do. It is just, oh, it's a Darkest Larry. I haven't seen that move in a while. <laughs> Since Sword and Shield, what are we doing here? <laughs> that wasn't Throw Chop. That wasn't Flare Blitz. I don't understand why you wouldn't just go Flare Blitz. Okay, we're, we're at least you get a chance to, you know, potentially KO there. But no Flare Blitz. All right. And I don't know what this is. Oh, it's Dragon. Oh, Great Tusk is kind of chilling from here. Um... But yeah, I, I can also just simply switch out the Flutter main, right? I can I can just do that and just go into the Merko here. Uh, but I don't think I need to do that. But honestly, like Flutter main did so much already that I'm just going to you know just click Shadow Ball over here, right into the Dragonite. Uh, actually Terra Normal is a thing, so he might just do that. And you knows I am uh, potentially think so. Maybe I just go into you. Right, let's just go into you and let's just try and get off a spore on this slot over here. Let's see what he does. So he didn't Terra, so that's unfortunate for me. <laughs> uh, oh no, wait, actually he does have a chance to do it. I forget my interaction skills first. So here's the, yep, there is the terrestrialization. So I'm glad I didn't stay to try and click the Shadow Ball. 
I would imagine this is Terra Normal, right? For East Beach shenanigans. Uh, yep, it is, so... Yeah, now if it is just East Beach into the Brute Bonnet, okay, sure. If it's not, then... Okay, sure. All right, it is just simple East Beach. I'm pretty sure it just picks up here, the Brute Bonnet. Oh, no, we live. Brute Bonnet kind of thick. All right, and there's the Rocky Helmet chip. All right, Incineroar stays asleep, which is good news for me. And here is the Spore. Well done there. Excellent. Okay, so Dragonite has to take a turn of sleep. Um, now what we can also do is just simply... Now that he's Terra Normal, okay, I can click Earthquake now. So that's good news for me. Uh, so now I can also simply uh, just click Tailwind there. I couldn't even click Sunny Day, in all honesty. Like, I, I want the, the Brute Bonnet to, to like, die, quote-unquote, right? Um, he could even stay asleep. That's the other thing, right? But how do I want to approach this? I can also just simply uh, check it with Seed Bomb over here. You know, I kind of want the instant to wake up here. All right, Dragonite stays asleep. All right, here is the sunny day. All right, getting ready, potentially, right? So Protosynthesis activates here. Uh, we're gonna get a defense boost just because my attack was a little bit too low. There's the Incineroar waking up. Swords Dance! What? <laughs> okay. Alright, here we go. Sea Bomb Chucky. Alright, there it is. A little bit of chip. Alright, now we can click Tailwind. Alright, and... Yeah, Swords Dance is, is very interesting there. But again, I'm just trying to... I, I think this will do it, right? We'll just, we'll just Rage Potter now and then we'll get the free switch. All right. All right, Eastbeat comes out into where? All right, into the Brute Bonnet. Okay, you know, if he clicked it into the Merkle, he might have had a chance there. Okay. So Brute Bonnet goes down there. Tailwind comes out, so that's going to be good for Great Tusk. Um, and there is the Flare Boots. All right, that's fine. Perfect. So down goes Murkrow. And there is some chip damage, which is great. And now we can just go into Fluttermane here on the left. And we can go into Great Tusk here on the right. Alright, now again, he can't E-speed the Flutter. So that's the one thing that we have going for us. He has to E-speed um, the, the Great Tusk in essence, right? Okay, so this is where we can activate... Are now do we take a risk? Now we don't need to risk it. I think we can just go dazzling gleam here, and for the great tusk, uh, we can ah. Uh, let me think about this. Because if I Terra now, and if he e speeds the flutter, then we're kind of cooked. Let's see what we want to do here. Honestly, I think it's fine either way. Uh, we can just Terra now. Let's go D gleam. Right, and we can we can just click uh, rock slide here. Like we don't. Oh, actually, there is no earthquake here. Oh, then that's it. It's over. Then I'm gonna just click close combat over here. Yeah, I think this is the way to do it. All right, so here's the flutter, Terra Fairy, and all. Did he read this and did he E speed the Great Tusk? Let's see. Alright, E speed comes out. I know you're banded. Alright, he does go for the Great Tusk and that does almost no damage. Alright, Dazzling Gleam comes out. This is just pick up the Dragonite. Alright, and oh, it actually pick, it picks up everything. Oh, Great Tusk didn't even get a chance to do anything. So, there is the power of Choice Specs Fluttermane, as you see. Okay. Uh, Murko did the job there. But so did Brute Bonnet. Like, Brute Bonnet clicking Spore on everything um, just gave us so much more momentum and gave us better positioning uh, that we didn't essentially need the Great Tusk here. No, no, no. There is no way someone is, is, is doing this. What? What is this? We've got Grimmsnarl. Well, Grimmsnarl's good. So is King Gambit. What? Is that a Pissimian and a Wired Ear? 
These guys having fun. There's got to be some Japanese tech that I don't know anything about. There's no way there's like a team with no Paradox Pokemon here. Oh no, what? Is, it, is there some like Explosion Terra Ghost gimmick here that I just am not aware of? Um, yeah. All right, so it screens Grimmsnarl. So that's interesting. It makes me want to start teach. It makes me want to start like Bloodmain and Brute Bonnet. Okay, stuff like this, right? And then I guess in the back we can bring in Raging Bolt, and then maybe Murkrow. Maybe is the keyword. I can't really like snarl anything, right? Do I really need this thing? I don't quite know what to really bring. <laughs> uh, let's probably let's probably just bring in the Great Tusk. Let's go all offense here. I got some weird matchups here. I don't know what the heck my opponent is doing. There's got to be some gimmick. There's got to be some best of one ladder gimmick. All right, we're the global challenge is over, but clearly it's not. <laughs> All right, bronze on King Gambit. Is this just straight up trick room and sword dance or something like that? What are we doing? I don't quite know. There's no way you click trick room here. Um. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna spore this thing. All right, I'm a, I'm scared of that, and I'm gonna shadow ball this thing. And we're gonna find out what the heck my opponent is doing. Okay, there's Protect, so it's not AV. So that's interesting to know. Here's a straight Shadow Ball. This is Specs, by the way. Bronzong lives, so he's calc for that. Okay, so then what are we doing? Are you clicking Trick Room? Okay, it is Trick Room. What? Huh, well, my Brute Bond is actually does have some speed here. Uh, listen, like, at the end of the day, I've got Sucker Punch here, but, I, you know, I can just spore something. Bronzon's gonna go first now, ideally. It's, it's gonna go for, like, these Iron Defense Body Press stuff, so I'm still gonna spore this slot. Um, unless he's, like, Goggles. Flutter, you're gonna come back. I'm going to just go into this thing and just rely on priority stuff. All right. And if he was going for the steel move, I'm going to resist it. I'm an electric type. So there's my type advantages in that regard. Bulldoze! Whoa, whoa. Okay. What are we doing? Don't tell me that's weakness policy. Oh, baby. It's weakness policy. <laughs> All right, where are we going? But did you go for the flutter or did you go for the brute bonnet? Okay. Iron Head! Oh, re-eat that! <laughs> Alright, and now we go for the Spore. Okay, so King Gambit goes down there. So that's good. Alright, so now we've got some we got some stuff. Now what we can do is we can still um we can sucker punch the bronzong. Um ideally, right? If he wants to do something else. Okay. We can always seed bomb it. Um now that I could be slower potentially. Uh, but I, I think I will just seed bomb it. I don't think there's anything I can really, uh, I'm really afraid of. And I'm just going to straight Thunderbolt the King Gambit. Get this thing off the field. Um, the Bronzong doesn't really threaten me here. King Gambit does fall fast asleep. He tried to do the Sucker Punch play, I'm sure. Uh, body Press comes out. That's not enough. All right, so I could have Sucker Punched him, actually. All right. So, so we're, we're going to seed bomb this thing anyway. All right, so a little bit of chip damage. All right, of course, not very effective. And here's a straight... You're not AV. So the King Gambit just goes down. So, yeah, great strategy. And now all my things should be faster because he clicked Bulldoze. So we'll see what how this ends up turning out for me. I just have to look at my stats and just divide everything by 1.5. There's a Passimian here. I don't quite know the speed tier of Passimian. And, and Grimmsnarl in the back... Okay, um, I gotta be honest, I don't know Simeon's speed tier here. 
Because I've never, I never really see this thing in, in play. There's got to be like some kind of explosion gimmick or something I'm not aware of. He is relatively fast, so I should be able to outspeed him with a spore. Um, the problem is he's a grass type, so that actually doesn't help me here. Uh, no, actually he's a, he's a fighting type. No, I, he just looks like a grass type. See, I don't even know the type of this thing. So we're going to spore that slot. And I'm just going to straight Thunderbolt. I don't think I'm really threatened by the Grimmsnarl anyway. So there's that. So there's the light screen. I mean, yeah. But I should outspeed this thing now. Yeah, I do. So enjoy the spore. So Pissimi stays asleep. And this is basically free Thunderbolt. Yeah, that's free Thunderbolt damage. Okay. Okay. And now we can, I mean, he could get Reflect up, but now what we can also do is we can Spore the Grimmsnarl slot. And I don't want to take, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm still going to click um, raw damage moves into the Passimian slot. Either way, we should outspeed. Unless Passimian wakes up here, one turn wake. But... I think we've done enough damage so far. Then, you know, stuff like Floodmate can clean up. All right, we are gonna see a Terrestrialization at long last. All right, he's gonna Terrestrialize the Sleeping Passimian. It is a Steel Terra. Okay, so that's gonna be great against something like a Fluttermane. I'm glad I switched that out later. All right, we spore the Grimmsnarl. So that's gonna take some sleep turns. Um. But yeah, more raw Thunderbolt damage into Passimian. Okay. But yeah, all in all, great, great job here. Passimian does wake up. All right, and he does go for the Rock Slide. That is not enough to kill the Raging Bolt. Dimensions return to normal. I can always click, um, you know, Thunderclap now. But all in all, I'm just going to click the Seed Bomb play. Uh, right over. Uh, oh, that's actually. Mm, it's actually even not very effective. So let's actually. We can seed bomb this slot technically and then just thunderclap over here and that should be okay. Unless the Passimian also has Quick Tap, which it doesn't. So thunderclap able to pick up Passimian. We're gonna knock ourselves out here, which means we're gonna get a free switch into our Flutter Main and just go for the biggest Moon Blast you've ever seen. Okay. All right, Grimstar stays fast asleep. Excellent. And now this is just going to be C bomb. Don't bring Grimstar in the back. Do not bring Grimstar in the back. That does nothing for you. Um, we could bring in Great Tusk actually and just rely on him. You know, we haven't really used it yet. I mean, we got into the first game a little bit, so let's just do it here. Great Tusk coming out. So what we can do is just simply click Rage Powder here, redirect everything, and then also. Uh, just click something like close combat here and just end him right You know just to end battle was canceled. See he had no momentum once he got into the grim snarl. So that was cool for us All right folks, so there's the rental one more time and you know, we had a pretty quick three games um, But all in all I, I had a lot of fun with uh, all this squad here, right? So you, you got to see um, pretty much all the mods in action, you know, Brute Bonnet was actually the MVP here, you know, could just spore pressure and allowing our, uh, our mods to stay alive and do constant damage while the opponents were asleep and not doing damage. And when that happens, you gain momentum and the other, and the opponent loses momentum in that sense, right? So that was the main idea there. Then you got to see a little bit of Great Tusk, Fluttermane, and Raging Bolt in the sun do like some good damage. Murko even, uh, again, having a key part with something like Sunny Day and Tailwind, uh, just allowing our mods to outspeed things and do more damage, uh, you know, depending on the case, right? AV Heatran, okay, great job there. But all in all, shout outs to Andrew again for giving us the rental. Tilzy, congratulations again for winning the tour. Uh, and of course, shout outs again go to... Uh, Henkake and Zabandit for also for their contributions to the squad as well. Give everybody a follow. We'll link their um, credentials in the video description below. But we'll be back with another video in the next one, guys. Peace out and have a good one.